Hey, what's up everybody? Today I want to show you a sideline of the Slav defense um, that you can use if you're a Slav player to surprise a player with the uh, white pieces. Matter of fact, I'll flip the board. This is um, known as the winner gambit. Start C4, uh, D4, D5, C4, C6. There's your Slav. And it's predicated on white playing knight c3. And the reason why is because this gives black an opportunity to gambit a pawn by playing e5. And those of you who uh, study chess might see the uh, similarities and relationship between this opening and the Albin counter gambit. And for you newbies out there, the Albin counter gambit goes like this. d4, d5, c4. And e5 immediately. Okay. Now, there's some fundamental differences, right? After e takes, excuse me, d takes e5, e4. One of the fundamental differences right away is notice that black, when he pushes this pawn, there's not a, a piece on c3. So black is essentially giving a tempo away not only is he gambiting the pawn but he's giving a tempo away just to create this um, wedge in the position for white and after say these moves right here black will excuse me white will often play a strategy of surrounding this pawn you know playing moves like knight bd2 or a3 first you know preventing the bishop uh, coming here and then play moves like that and gradually uh, build up on this pawn sometimes this a3 b4 and bishop b2 again attacking this pawn but the important thing um is that black is just you know using a tempo just to push here all right now in contrast with the winner winner account counter gambit winner gambit excuse me at the d4 d5 c4 c6 you have the C pawn here, so this knight's not going to be coming here to C6. And knight C3, the knight is already here. And notice that the queen has access over here. And now the main line is E5, right, just like the Albans. D takes, and now when D4 is played, it's with tempo. So black is just not giving away time here, it's with tempo. And then, knight e4, and check. And this is, you know, because white, black has moved the c-pawn. So he has this check. And say after bishop d2, then the queen takes e5. So he gets the pawn back pretty quickly. And again, it's with tempo. So black is just not losing time as he would be in the Albin counter gambit. So that's like your main line there. E takes D5. A couple of um, other tries were tried in the past. This opening was popular at uh, top levels um, 1991 to about 1993-94. and was played by, um, you know, a lot of strong grandmasters. Uh, Predrag Nikolic, uh, Valery Salov, um, Bogdan Lalic, uh, a lot of different... Uh, uh, players, Pavel, uh, Dragubov, um, uh, uh, Piquet, uh, a lot of players. Um, one of the early lines that was tried was uh, C takes D5. And C takes D5, Knight F3. Right? Bringing the pieces out ahead in development, attacking uh, the center. Right? This was... Which this was tried, but this variation soon disappeared. After e4, knight e5, and f6, uh, black, you know, was um, you know having an e easy game taken that way. So instead of bringing the knight out after c takes d5, c takes d5, e4 was uh, tested in a few um, high-level games. Okay. And black was playing d takes e4, bishop b5 check, bishop d7, 
Uh, D takes E5, cat between the pawn. Bishop B4, pinning this knight, protecting this pawn, and threatening to take here. Bishop D2, breaking the pin. And now bishop takes C3, removing the protector of the bishop on B5. Bishop takes D7, knight takes D7, and now bishop C3. And then knight C5, exclamation mark, and this knight is going into this square. Okay, black obtains dangerous uh, attacking play. Right, and then this line disappeared also. That hole on uh, D3 is just um, too much uh, in this uh, position. Okay, so then that line kind of faded. Another move that was tried, rather unpretentious move, if I might add, after e5, is just the move e3, which is played by, you know, unprepared players. Basically, they get surprised, they see this, and they just try to play solid. And of course, black has no um, problems problems equalizing I'm um, sure e takes d4 can just be played <clears throat> but e4 you know going into a uh, kind of a reversed uh, French advance um, type position um, you know seems pretty uh, interesting seems like a good option okay so that gives you a little back story with those side lines so therefore the main line came to be d takes e5 okay and then black strongest had been d4 knight e4 queen a5 and again now white used to answer this with knight d2 okay and then knight d7 Showed to be pretty reliable. Knight h6 is playable. And so instead of knight d2, <coughs> after the game, Kasparov Nikolic um, from uh, Manila uh, 1992, Kasparov had played the move bishop d2, attacking the queen uh, immediately. And now we're going to go in the game. All right, um, Mikhail Gorovich with the white pieces versus Yaron Piquet, the black pieces. And this is from um, 1993, all right? Now, Kasparov said after this game that this move, uh, Bishop D2, um, that this led to unexpectedly sharp and... Um, um, very and very dangerous variations uh, for black so this is one of those lines that um, that if you're black and you play this live um, it's definitely worth preparing it as a sideline especially to face knight c3 um, what I've noticed in playing the slav is that a lot of players that play uh, knight c3 here um, Usually they expect you just to transpose and play knight f6 and then you wind up, you know, going into main lines. <clears throat> or they might want you to go into, you know, take and go into these um, uh, geller Spassky variations after, you know, here. There's all kind of funny names for this stuff like Argentine uh, variation and stuff like that. But, you know, some players want you to take right away and then... You know, you go into all of this this type of stuff. Knight F3, Knight F6, you know, E5, or Bishop, you know, Bishop, oops, not the King, not King D2. <laughs> so it's a good, a good uh, surprise weapon, and it's not, it's not bad. The downside of it, as you might have um, perceived, is that Black's king, Queen, um, you know, is out kind of early. And, you know, if White is not careful... Um, if white is not careful, um, uh, excuse me, black is not careful, the queen, um, you know, can definitely, um, be attacked by the minor pieces. So now we're going to go to the game. Mikhail Gorovich with the white pieces versus Yaron Piquet with the black pieces. So 94, 
Queen a5 check, getting the pawn back. Bishop d2 from Gorovich, and now Queen e5. Remember, gaining time. And this is why, of course, Knight d2 was played also because anticipating this. So Knight d2, the Knight goes to g3, and now, of course, the Knight's going to come here and hitting the Queen. So the Queen can either just drop back in anticipation of that or play Knight f6, which is one of the main lines. Piquet just drops back, Queen d6. Queen c2, and now white shows the desire to castle uh, queen side. So notice that, of course, by white moving, um, excuse me, by black moving his queen several times, you know, first to a5, then to e5, and then back to um, d6, that he's falling behind and development somewhat. So, of course, black's aim is to, you know, castle, castle long. And just rip open the position, and it's a good it's a good plan. Seeing that Black has um, wasted several tempi, now Black's goal is to consolidate. Okay, using this wedge in the position as a hindrance to White's, um, you know, development in the position to free his own pieces. So now Black has to play, you know, you know, get itself together quickly. You know, and then move his rooks to the center of the board. So simple plans for black. Sorry for all the arrows, but it's kind of funny to me. But <laughs> but a simple plan for black here, he has to consolidate and do it quickly before he's um, overran by uh, white's lead in development. So now queen c2 comes out, and there it is, bishop e7, castle. So now we have this dangerous opposition. It's always dangerous when you have a piece of lesser value pointed at a piece of high value it's good to try to get out of that situation before tactics arise okay so queen um bishop e7 castles castles again this is black's plan he has to get consolidated quickly e3 and of course white on the other hand is trying to open up the position escalate the conflict it's um per requirements of his position and being ahead in development D takes E3. Gorovich plays Bishop C3. Okay, and and the tactics are already, um, are already on the table here. If Queen C5, for instance, threatening to take another pawn, or perhaps waiting for White to capture here so that Black can play Queen takes um, E3 check on the King, that will fall to B4. And again, this is one of the downsides of having the queen out early. Queen b6, c5, queen c7, and then bishop e5 trapping the queen. There's nowhere for the queen to go. All these squares are covered. Everything's covered. So th these are the dangers inherent in the position. So queen c5 was not played, but queen c7, a more prudent move protecting the queen. Bishop e3. Development continues, knight a6, and now king b1 is played. Now this turns out to be um, an error as it gives black time against, again to um, do what he wants to do. He's close to um, completing development and then white just kind of has this, um, this weak pawn and then black is all caught up in development. So if the knight a6... Possibly a3 was better, keeping the knight off the square. Because the knight, knight on b4 harasses the queen. And then moves like knight g4 could be played, right? Attacking this. Say bishop d3, for example. Knight takes e3. Bishop takes h7 check. King h8, bishop g7, king takes g7, knight h5, and king h8, if king h6, queen d2 is possible. 
queen c3 is pretty strong also and it's better <clears throat> threatening to come here then after queen takes h5 queen takes e3 and you can see that black <clears throat> would be in trouble there so not king h6 but king h8 queen c3 check f6 queen e3 and king h7 and then rook h e1 and this is unclear okay this analysis this position very dangerous for black however instead of taking his bishop bishop c5 is an improvement uh, that I found in my analysis just attacking the queen and I don't see how white can really improve so I think that although it looks dangerous for white here that black is um that black is uh probably in the driver's seat here and winning but it's very sharp and I, that's why I showed you that variation so you can see um you know some some of the the ideas and of course instead of going into this bishop d3 line white can just simply protect the pawn with rook e1 but then black is okay black just plays like a move like g6 and he has no worries in the position <clears throat> instead in the game um Gorovich played the natural move, um, king b1. All right, knight b4 was played. And now queen c1, black doesn't want to give up, excuse me, white doesn't want to give up this powerful bishop. He loses tempo on the queen. Now, knight g4. Right? See, black is fighting for the initiative all of a sudden. A3. Piquet plays A5. Very strong move. He takes the knight. And this turns out to be a Trojan horse. Because after A takes B4. Gaining time against the queen. Excuse me, against the bishop. Now the um, A file is open. Now bishop E1. Queen a5. And it's interesting in this game how white developed so well at the beginning and then had his pieces just totally driven back. Rook d3 by Gorovich. And the idea is to play um, with the idea of rook a3. Because there's a pin right here. This bishop is in opposition to this high value piece. So rook a3. And then this pawn will not be able to capture because black will lose the queen. Okay. So those, that's the idea. If h3. Then. Amazingly. Black has knight f2 anyway. With this fork. Because what happens is once this bishop. Is decoyed. Right off the deflected off this this diagonal, this pawn now becomes free to move. Right, and now you have a mating situation. There's no way to no way to stop the mate. So this is why this move is chosen here at rook d3. Queen a2 was played. Queen a2 check. Queen a4 is probably more accurate with this threat here. But queen a2 check was played in the game. King c2. And now b5 was played just opening up lines. Another good move. Bishop c5. Let's put him, just putting more pressure. But b5... <clears throat> and now h3 
and one line that's possible of course if c takes b5 c takes b5 that's just suicide opening up these lines knight d4 bishop e6 and let's say king d1 let's use this rook rook fc8 and again it's too much firepower concentrated um on the queen side <clears throat> So we should know just on principle that those lines cannot be open. So 21h3 was played. Natural move, bishop uh, b takes c4, attacking the rook. h takes g4. White's trying to get some kind of counterplay in there. c takes d3 check. Bishop d3. g6. Right, this is threatened. So G6. And white just played E4. And rook D8. <clears throat> Queen H6, threatening, um, not mate, but check. And now B3. And King D2. If if King C1, then Queen A1, and let's say Bishop B1, right? Just for giggles, Queen takes B1. King takes B1, deflecting, right? Causing the King to move here, and you got this pawn here, and then Rook D1, right? And now you play. Even play a move like this. Bang! <laughs> right? Alright. Alright. So, where were we? Um, let's go back here. <clears throat> Alright, so back to the game. Um, to 25, queen h6 with this thread here. b3 was played. Check. King d2. Queen takes b2. And now the king is running, running, running. Bishop c5. King f4. Rook d3. Go ahead, take a pawn. The king is still safe. e5 was played. Now the other rook comes in. Ninety-four. Ouch! Rook takes e4. King takes e4, and rook d4. And that's all she wrote. White resigned. <clears throat> so great, great, fantastic game. And if king e3 here, king e3 here, you see that all of a sudden. Again, opposition. So you, you utilize that. Discover check. And notice how all these squares are covered. So let's say if king d3, then the light square bishop will take over and just play bishop f5 checkmate. All right, so that was like a brief, you know, overview of an exciting um, variation in the... Um, you know, in this opening, again, it's called the uh, Slav Defense Winner of Gambit. And it's very close relative to the Albin Counter Gambit. And again, remember, it's predicated on the E4 square not being, um, E5 square not being adequately guarded by white. So if black, if white does play knight c3 in the Slav, this is an option for you. You don't have to just go into, you know, the regular Slav lines, knight f6. But if you prepare this, you can, you know, surprise your opponent and you get good play and dangerous activity with black. Now you kind of you kind of put white on um white under a lot of pressure, kind of like the Sicilian. It's like you force white to to fight. If he doesn't fight, white becomes very passive. For instance, if he does this, like I showed you in the beginning. Okay? So, this main line again, here, remember the wedge, <clears throat> here, 
here, and these are the two main lines, knight d2 and bishop d2, which was played uh, by Kasparov against uh, Predrag uh, Nikolic. All right, and in another video, I'll show you um, that game. Okay, so that is it for now, and I'll see you guys on the next video.